While many fans thought they fully understood Gilda Radner, the multi-talented actress, writer, and singer who rose to fame in the United States during the 70s, 80s, recently shocking secrets about her have brought them profound disappointment. Best known for her roles on Saturday Night Leave, Gilda successfully directed the audience and media towards her professional path, concealing many secrets in her private life. Today, 42 years after her death, those secrets are finally revealed. So, what are we waiting for? Let's start the video. Gilda Radner's entry into the world seemed to align with the prosperous post-World War II era, growing up in the vibrant city of Detroit, Michigan. Born into a family of wealth and privilege, her parents, Henrietta and Herman Radner, were successful Jewish professionals providing her with a comfortable upbringing that included the luxury of having a nanny named Dibby. The post-war years in Detroit were marked by economic growth and social changes, and young Gilda Radner was a beneficiary of these circumstances. However, despite the apparent ease of her childhood, Radner's life would take a poignant turn as she faced internal struggles that contradicted the external privileges she enjoyed. In her later years, Radner candidly revealed the hidden challenges she grappled with in her autobiography, It's Always Something. This tell-all narrative shocked fans accustomed to her vivacious and cheerful on-screen personas. Radner confessed to battling a severe anxiety disorder that had haunted her since her youth, a revelation that cast a shadow over her seemingly idyllic early years. The disclosure of Radner's anxiety disorder shed light on the internal turmoil she experienced, even during the times when she appeared jovial and carefree to the outside world. The question arose, did she always harbor a sense of foreboding about the uncertainties that lay ahead? Or did her anxiety develop as a response to life's challenges? Gilda Radner's struggle with anxiety had profound effects on her health manifesting in a series of challenges that unfolded throughout her life. Remarkably, her battle with these issues began at an incredibly young age, casting a shadow over her childhood. In her autobiography, Radner opened up about her enduring struggle with eating disorders, revealing the profound impact of anxiety on her relationship with food. Before discovering comedy as a coping mechanism for her inner turmoil, Radner turned to an unhealthy outlet, food, and not in moderation. At the tender age of nine or ten, she found herself weighing a staggering 160 pounds. Recognizing the severity of the situation, her mother, Henrietta Radner, sought medical intervention, taking her daughter to a doctor for immediate assistance. The doctor's response was a prescription for the diet pill Dexedrine, an intervention that marked the beginning of Radner's tumultuous relationship with body image and weight. The prescription seemed to work, but perhaps too well. Within a few years, Radner's health took another turn, landing her back in the hospital. This time, however, the issue was the opposite. She weighed a mere 93 pounds and still grappled with a distorted perception of her body, expressing feelings of being overweight. These extreme fluctuations between dramatic highs and lows became a recurring theme in Radner's life, haunting her throughout her career. The pendulum swung between excessive weight gain and drastic weight loss, painting a poignant picture of the toll her anxiety took on both her physical and mental well-being. Gilda Radner's journey toward self-discovery and resilience took a significant turn as she managed to overcome her body image struggles, leading to a transformative chapter in her life that involved both personal growth and the pursuit of love. Choosing to prioritize her personal life over academic pursuits, Radner made the bold decision to leave her final year of university. Driven by a desire to build a life with her boyfriend, she relocated to Toronto with the aspiration of becoming his wife and embracing the role of a homemaker. At this juncture, it seemed that Radner had successfully cast off the shadows of her past, embarking on a new chapter that promised love and fulfillment. However, beneath the surface of this seemingly idyllic transition, Radner remained acutely aware of societal expectations and perceptions. 
She acknowledged that with her distinctive big hair and a personality that transcended conventional gender norms, she didn't fit the mold of the perfect example of her gender. External opinions echoed this sentiment. Composer Stephen Schwartz, for instance, noted that Radner didn't conform to the traditional standards of a classic beauty or a great singer. Despite these perceptions, there was an undeniable magnetic quality about Radner that captivated audiences. In the face of societal expectations and unconventional attributes, Radner embraced her unique qualities, recognizing that her charisma and charm could be wielded as assets. Unfazed by conventional norms, she was about to embark on a journey that would leverage her distinctiveness to forge a path in the world of entertainment. Gilda Radner's journey into showbiz, despite her own self-perceived notions about her appearance, became a turning point in her life. In Toronto, she secured a role in the immensely popular musical Godspell, an opportunity that proved to be a godsend for her burgeoning career. Working alongside notable talents such as Eugene Levy and Martin Short, Radner discovered her comedic prowess and began to radiate as a magnetic comedian. Godspell not only marked a significant milestone in Radner's professional life, but also became the backdrop for the blossoming of a complex and tumultuous romantic relationship. During the production, Radner's heart veered away from her Toronto boyfriend as she entered into a passionate and tumultuous two-year romance with Martin Short. Their on-again, off-again relationship became a roller coaster of emotions, with sparks flying both on and off the stage. While Godspell, propelled the careers of some of its cast members into stardom, including Radner herself. It also witnessed the backstage fireworks of intense relationships. Radner's connection with Short was both a source of joy and a well-guarded secret. Despite the highs and lows of their romance, Radner chose to maintain a silence about the details of their relationship, even in her autobiography. However, Martin Short, in a candid interview with Howard Stern, offered a poignant glimpse into their love story. Short revealed that Radner, despite her comedic brilliance, struggled with profound unhappiness. He shared that she became upset with him for not fully comprehending the depths of her sadness, shedding light on the emotional complexity that characterized their relationship. Following her success in Godspell, Gilda Radner was convinced of her destiny to bring laughter to the world, even if it meant enduring personal struggles along the way. Armed with the experience of a successful musical, she joined the Second City Comedy Troupe, honing her comedic skills and further establishing herself as a formidable talent. Radner's magnetic personality and comedic prowess propelled her swiftly into the big leagues, marking the beginning of a career that would shape the landscape of comedy. Throughout her professional journey, Radner developed a noteworthy pattern of forming romantic connections with her castmates. Despite the challenges of her past relationship with Martin Short, she seamlessly continued to forge bonds with her co-workers. During her time on the radio hour, Radner embarked on a romantic relationship with Brian Doyle Murray the brother of the iconic Bill Murray. This romantic entanglement added a personal dimension to Radner's professional pursuits, showcasing her ability to navigate both the highs and lows of personal relationships within the entertainment industry. In a groundbreaking move in 1975, Gilda Radner became a founding member of the Not Ready for Prime Time Players, forever altering the landscape of comedy, Little did she know at the time that this comedy sketch show would evolve into the wildly popular and iconic Saturday Night Live, SNL. Radner, along with her co-stars, unwittingly stepped into a realm that would not only bring them fame and success, but also expose them to the challenges and controversies inherent in the world of entertainment. Gilda Radner's journey on Saturday Night Live, SNL, placed her at the forefront of a cultural phenomenon that has both defined and challenged the careers of its cast members for decades. Unfortunately, Radner, like seven other SNL cast members, 
fell victim to the mysterious and infamous Saturday Night Live curse. Her untimely and bitter end became a tragic chapter in the dark legacy associated with the show. Before succumbing to the curse, Radner experienced significant highs in her SNL career. Renowned for her exceptional comedic talent, she created several memorable recurring characters that endeared her to audiences. Among them was Emily Litella, a bespectacled pretend news anchor with a unique charm. Interestingly, Radner drew inspiration for this character from her own childhood nanny, Dibby. Despite the apparent contrast between Emily Latella and the nanny who inspired her, Radner's creativity and ability to infuse humor into her characters became a hallmark of her SNL legacy. In a memorable and heartwarming moment during a 1983 appearance on Late Night with David Letterman, Radner decided to share a personal aspect of her life with the audience. Instead of merely performing the Emily Latella character, she surprised everyone by making a live phone call to her 90-year-old nanny, Dibby. This impromptu and genuine conversation between Radner and her beloved childhood nanny revealed a side of Radner that went beyond her on-screen personas. It showcased the deep affection and appreciation she held for the woman who had played a significant role in her upbringing. Gilda Radner's iconic character, Emily Latella, not only pushed the boundaries of live television standards, but also became a trailblazer in breaking rules both on and off the screen. In a groundbreaking moment alongside fellow comedian Jane Curtin, Radner made television history by being one of the first people to utter the infamous B-word on live television, challenging the conventions of the time. However, behind this bold exterior, a different kind of B-word, bulimia, haunted her personal life. Even during the pinnacle of her career on Saturday Night Live, SNL, Radner continued to grapple with the relentless presence of anxiety, and its devastating effects were palpable. The shadows of her childhood eating disorders returned, and she found herself ensnared in the grips of bulimia. The struggle with mental health and body image that had haunted her earlier years resurfaced, underscoring the ongoing internal battles she faced despite her external success. Interestingly, the resurgence of trauma in Radner's life appeared to be intertwined with her dating experiences, particularly her penchant for romancing her co-workers. This pattern continued during her SNL days, and one of her notable romances was with fellow cast member Bill Murray. The irony of dating both Murray brothers, having previously been involved with Brian Doyle Murray during the radio hour, added a layer of complexity to Radner's personal life. Unfortunately, her romance with Bill Murray was short-lived, lasting only about an hour, a poignant reminder that relationships within the close-knit SNL family didn't always endure. Gilda Radner, despite her best efforts to maintain privacy, found the details of her relationship with Bill Murray exposed to the public, resulting in a spectacular backfire. The tabloids, always hungry for sensational stories, not only uncovered Radner's struggles with bulimia, but also reported on the tumultuous end of her romance with Murray. The specifics of their breakup remained shrouded in mystery, but the consensus was that it ended badly, leaving Radner deeply affected and, some would say, never fully recovering. Despite the personal challenges she faced, Radner's fearless approach to comedy remained a defining characteristic of her career. One of her standout SNL characters was the baby-voiced Baba Wawa, a playful spoof on legendary news anchor Barbara Walters. While Radner's comedic genius entertained millions of viewers, it didn't sit well with Walters herself. In fact, Walters openly expressed her displeasure with Radner's impression. What makes this clash of personalities even more remarkable is that Radner, unafraid of pushing boundaries, decided to take her impression of Walters directly to the source. During a party, Walters confronted Radner, insisting that she perform the Baba Wawa sketch right there. Radner, known for her ability to capture the essence of her characters, began with, Hiwo, I'm Baba Wawa. 
It's truly a pleasure to talk to you. Delivering the signature baby-like voice, the skit concluded with Radner's trademark incoherent babble. To her surprise, Walters didn't react with indignation, but instead found the performance amusing, revealing a shared appreciation for the comedic artistry that transcended personal differences. The complex romantic entanglements in Gilda Radner's life continued as she navigated the intricate social dynamics of the SNL cast. Her unconventional journey through relationships reached a new chapter when, after her amusing encounter with Barbara Walters, the two found themselves in the same cafe in the south of France. Despite the potential for a confrontation, Walters surprised Radner with a warm hug and declared herself a newfound fan, burying the hatchet in their comedic clash. However, Radner's romantic life moved faster than a bad punchline as she transitioned from her relationships with the Murray brothers to a new liaison with Dan Aykroyd. The details of this affair remain shrouded in mystery, with little information available to dissect the intricacies of their connection. What is certain is that, like many of Radner's previous relationships, this one didn't withstand the test of time. After parting ways with Aykroyd, Radner found herself in the company of Harold Ramis. Unfortunately, this romance, too, proved to be ill-fated, adding another layer of emotional turmoil to Radner's tumultuous love life. The string of failed relationships left emotional scars, and Radner, perhaps weary of the romantic roller coaster, sought to put the past behind her. However, as fate would have it, the timing of Radner's desire for closure couldn't have been worse. The unfolding events hinted at a sense of impending tragedy, and Radner's yearning for a fresh start was overshadowed by the looming challenges that lay ahead. Gilda Radner's romantic misadventures within the SNL cast left her with a bitter aftertaste, to the extent that she couldn't bring herself to watch the 1984 classic Ghostbusters, starring Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Harold Ramis, her former flames. The film became a painful reminder of her tumultuous relationships, prompting her to distance herself from the cinematic reunion of her ex-boyfriends. In a move that reflected the emotional weight of her past connections, Radner chose to metaphorically ghost her former castmates, avoiding the movie that symbolized a chapter she preferred to leave behind. Despite the challenges in her romantic life, Radner cherished fond memories of her male SNL castmates. Her unique ability to bring laughter into their lives made her a beloved figure among the group. In her autobiography, Radner recalled the camaraderie of her SNL days, stating, All the guys like to have me around because I would laugh at them till I peed in my pants and tears rolled out of my eyes. Her infectious laughter and vibrant spirit endeared her to the male members of the cast, showcasing the genuine bonds that transcended the complexities of romantic relationships. While Radner maintained close friendships with her SNL castmates, she stood firm in her principles. Despite the prevalence of illicit substances during that era, Radner never succumbed to the temptations that surrounded her. In fact, she openly chastised her castmates for partaking in such activities. Her refusal to compromise her values, even in the face of societal pressures, reflected her strength of character and determination to stay true to herself. As Gilda Radner bid farewell to the show she had played an instrumental role in starting in 1980, she left behind a legacy that had turned her into a household name. Despite her newfound fame, Radner experienced a tumult of emotions and mixed feelings about her celebrity status. Saturday Night Live, historians aptly captured her mercurial reaction to stardom, noting that she seemed angry when she was approached and upset when she wasn't. The complexities of fame and public attention appeared to weigh heavily on Radner's shoulders. Radner's unique brand of comedy had attracted a diverse fan base, including some rather eccentric followers. Her fan mail took an unusual turn when, after submitting a blood and urine test, she received a letter from the lab containing the results, along with a peculiar note. The admirer expressed, Dear Gilda, 
I'm a big fan, and I wanted to express my admiration for you. It was a great honor to analyze your urine. Such devoted, albeit bizarre, fans underscored the challenges and eccentricities that came with the territory of being a beloved public figure. Post-SNL, Radner embarked on a new chapter in her career, trying her hand at the stage. She ventured into the world of Broadway with a one-woman show where she showcased material that had been deemed too risque for primetime television. While the Broadway show itself was a resounding success, its theatrical release faced a different fate. It was a total flop. Despite the setback in the transition from stage to screen, Radner didn't leave the stage empty-handed. While immersed in the creation of her one-woman Broadway production, Gilda Radner continued her pattern of romancing her co-workers, this time forming a connection with musician G.E. Smith. Their love quickly blossomed, leading to an informal yet romantic civil ceremony that marked the beginning of their union. The elopement was a simple affair, with Radner donning a modest crinoline dress and Smith opting for his best jeans. Despite the initial romantic charm, this marriage, like some of Radner's previous relationships, was destined for failure. Although Radner's Hollywood career didn't unfold as the resounding success she had envisioned, it did bring her something unexpected. In 1982, she starred alongside Gene Wilder in the film Hanky Panky. The title turned out to be apt, considering the romantic developments that unfolded on set. Radner later reflected in her autobiography that meeting Wilder was love at first sight. However, there was a significant hurdle, the fact that she was a recently married woman. According to Gene Wilder's account in his 2005 memoir, Kiss Me Like a Stranger, it was Radner who initiated their romance. During a night spent reviewing script changes in Wilder's hotel room, Radner made her move. Wilder described the scene in vivid detail, recounting how Radner pinned him down on the bed and playfully exclaimed, I have a plan for fun. The revelation of this passionate encounter added a layer of complexity to Radner's personal life and relationships. Gene Wilder's memoir provided intimate details about the complex dynamics between him and Gilda Radner during the filming of Hanky Panky. Wilder confessed to being captivated by Radner, describing her as radiant and admitted to grappling with intense desires in the heat of the moment. However, Reality hit him hard when he remembered that Radner was still a married woman and he himself had been divorced twice already. Determined not to contribute to the demise of a third marriage, even if it wasn't his own, Wilder resisted Radner's advances and sent her away. For Radner, this rejection served as a pivotal moment. Despite the setback, she saw a potential path to happiness and an opportunity to break the curse that seemed to linger over her romantic life. The key, in her mind, was to first dissolve her marriage. In 1981, shortly after leaving SNL, Radner faced a significant career choice. She was slated to star in Neighbors alongside John Belushi and her ex-boyfriend, Dan Aykroyd. However, the wounds from her breakup with Aykroyd were still too fresh, leading her to turn down the role in favor of working on Hanky Panky with Wilder. Radner seemingly believed that Wilder held the potential to break the curse that had haunted her love life. The chemistry between Radner and Wilder was undeniable, and their connection deepened during the filming, particularly after that nearly magical night in Wilder's hotel room. However, Radner's marriage to G.E. Smith began to unravel shortly after Hanky Panky. The strain on the relationship became evident, and it wasn't long before the marriage disintegrated entirely. Meanwhile, it's clear from the narrative that Wilder wasn't passively waiting for Radner in the wings. The complexities of their evolving relationship, entangled with Radner's personal struggles and romantic history, added layers of depth to her life story. Following her divorce from G.E. Smith, Gilda Radner's romantic journey took a transformative turn as she began dating Gene Wilder. To Radner, this new chapter felt like a shift from black and white to technicolor, a sentiment capturing the vibrancy and joy she found in her evolving relationship. 
However, what Radner wasn't aware of was that Wilder's feelings were not entirely aligned with hers. Wilder, despite acknowledging the special nature of their connection, harbored reservations. He felt Radner was too young for him, and her perceived clinginess didn't align with his preferences. In his own words, Wilder admitted that they didn't get along well on certain levels. Despite these challenges, there was an undeniable force that kept them together, transcending the differences that threatened to pull them apart. In Wilder's perspective, they were temperamentally wrong, but also divinely right, a contradiction that encapsulated the complexity and depth of their love. Their relationship, marked by both conflict and undeniable affection, faced a critical juncture in 1984. Radner and Wilder were slated to star together in The Woman in Red. However, a wrench was thrown into their plans when Radner's dog fell ill just before filming began. In response, Wilder decided to proceed to the set alone, triggering an unexpected and painful separation. The emotional toll of this sudden distance led Wilder to a moment of clarity. As he left for the set, a realization struck him. I should marry this girl. It was a spontaneous revelation that altered the course of their relationship. After completing the filming of The Woman in Red, Gilda Radner exchanged her red dress for a white one as she and Jean Wilder embarked on a new chapter of their lives together. The picturesque setting of Saint-Tropez became the backdrop for their joyous union, as Radner and Wilder finally tied the knot. The honeymoon phase, however, extended far beyond the wedding ceremony, with mutual friends recalling those initial years of their marriage as a time when the couple seemed like constant honeymooners. Despite the idyllic facade, Radner and Wilder faced challenges on their journey to building a family. While they reveled in the joy of their union, the couple yearned for a family of their own. However, a heartbreaking issue emerged, a devastating problem that left Radner grappling with profound loss. Despite multiple attempts, Radner experienced the heartbreak of painful miscarriages, casting a shadow over their dreams of parenthood. As the emotional toll mounted, Radner's health took a concerning turn. Inexplicable bouts of fatigue became a constant companion, reaching a breaking point when, during a trip to Paris, Radner collapsed on the street. Fueled by the fear of a family history marked by tragedy, her father's passing from a brain tumor, Radner sought answers from multiple doctors. The haunting question that echoed in her conversations with each physician revealed her deepest fears. It's not cancer, is it? Gilda Radner's life took a devastating turn when her worst nightmare materialized during a surgical operation. Doctors discovered a sizable tumor. The grim diagnosis revealed that Radner was facing stage 4 ovarian cancer, marking a formidable and advanced stage of the disease. Despite the gravity of her situation, Radner maintained her resilient spirit and kept her comedic instincts sharp. Even in the face of this life-altering challenge, she slipped into her old SNL characters, humorously addressing her cancer cells with lines like, Hey, what are you trying to do in here? Make me sick! The use of humor, a coping mechanism ingrained in Radner since her early struggles with anxiety, served as a temporary shield against the harsh reality of her diagnosis. However, the fear and anguish stemming from her cancer diagnosis proved to be overwhelming, pushing Radner to emotional extremes. Gene Wilder, her husband, later recounted the difficult moments when Radner, in the midst of her pain, would break down and lash out, leading to heated exchanges where he would express his helplessness, shouting, I don't know how to help you. The very humor that had been her ally throughout life seemed inadequate in the face of this formidable adversary. As news of Radner's diagnosis spread, a supportive circle of friends, including her ex-boyfriends, rallied to her side. A poignant reunion unfolded at a Los Angeles party where tearful farewells took place. Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd, her former Flames and SNL castmates, carried her around the gathering to facilitate her goodbyes. 
a heart-wrenching scene that spoke to the depth of their connection and shared history. Despite the dire prognosis, Radner experienced a surprising twist in her journey. Following multiple rounds of chemotherapy, she entered a period of remission, defying the odds and offering a glimmer of hope. Celebrating her recovery, Radner secured a feature in Life magazine and made a promise to host an episode of SNL in the near future. However, fate dealt another cruel blow, and bad timing once again intervened, altering the course of Radner's narrative and leaving her at the mercy of unpredictable twists in her health and the relentless pursuit of resilience. The anticipation of Gilda Radner's return to SNL was met with unexpected obstacles when a writer's strike intervened, postponing her scheduled comeback. However, this delay was just a precursor to the storm that awaited her. In September 1988, Radner faced a cruel resurgence of her cancer, which had returned with a vengeance. As her doctors prepared her for a CT scan, a sense of foreboding engulfed Radner, and she expressed a heartbreaking plea to her husband, Gene Wilder. Help me out of here. Tragically, Radner's premonition proved accurate. While undergoing the CT scan, she slipped into a coma from which she would never awaken. Three agonizing days later, on May 20th, 1989, Gilda Radner took her final breath leaving behind a legacy that would forever resonate in the world of comedy. Wilder, mourning the loss of his beloved wife, lamented that he never had the chance to say a conscious goodbye to Radner. Despite this personal regret, Radner managed to bid a poignant farewell to her millions of fans in a way that echoed the essence of her comedic spirit. The evening of Radner's passing coincided with the scheduled season finale of SNL. In a spontaneous and heartfelt gesture, host Steve Martin and the cast set aside their original plans and dedicated the episode to a tribute befitting a comedy legend. The show began with a tearful Steve Martin, setting the tone for a tribute that transcended comedy. The broadcast featured a clip of a 1978 sketch that captured the essence of Gilda Radner's talent. The sketch, set in a nightclub, evolved into an uproarious yet beautiful parody of an old Hollywood dance routine with Radner and Martin showcasing their comedic chemistry. This poignant tribute, simultaneously hilarious and heartbreaking, served as a fitting farewell to a woman who had left an indelible mark on the world of comedy, Gilda Radner. What do you think about Gilda Radner's little revealed secrets? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.